One of the technologies that's unique to the telecommunications engineering profession is conversion of analog data to digital data to allow it to be transmitted and used in networks. This is basically one of the key concepts that every modern telecommunication engineer needs to know. The syllabus refers to innovation and modern practices. This is really one of the key ones. Um, there's four steps involved in sampling data. This might be the output from a microphone, which is generated in analog form. A microphone is essentially, here's the sound waves, uh, either low pressure or high pressure air. Here the sound is high pressure, here it's low pressure, higher, lower, higher. So what we actually have is, the sound here is closer together, or the air part molecules are closer together. Because as we know, sound is a pressure wave. So that might be the pressure that's represented by that electrical signal. Where the high, high pressure is the higher amplitude sound, or the um, represented by the higher voltages, represent the higher pressure. The lower voltage represent the areas of low pressure. What's actually happening as I'm speaking to you right now, talking telecoms, I'm looking straight at a video camera. To record the sound, first up, my vocal cords are vibrating. And as I'm breathing out and vibrating, my mouth is creating areas of low and high pressure inside um, the uh, vocal cavity that then get projected out the mouth and travel in all directions. So the air is either getting compressed or rarefied, the opposite of compressed. So we've got areas of high pressure where it's compressed and low pressure where it's rarefied. That's travelling to the microphone in the video camera. The microphone works exactly like your human ear. Your human ear works. There is a eardrum. There's the sound waves hitting it, or the pressure waves hitting it. And as it's because in there it's a sealed cavity behind your eardrum, as the pressure pushes, it pushes the eardrum in. When you hit low pressure, it sucks the eardrum out and vibrates your eardrum. That vibration gets converted through three bones into vibration which then transmits up the cochlea into nerve endings and the nerve endings here are high frequency, the nerve endings there if it's low frequency they trigger. So it's basically converting air pressure into electrical signals inside the nerves that go to your brain. As microphone works exactly the same way. As microphone works. So again, there is a lightweight diaphragm with a coil surrounding it. And in the middle of that electrical coil is a magnet. As the diaphragm vibrates backwards and forwards, it pushes that coil through a magnetic field. As you know, subjecting a wire to a changing magnetic field induces a current inside the wire. So that coil moving in and out of the magnetic field generates a voltage. That voltage that it's generating gets produced here into an electrical signal. Let me show you an actual sample of a speaker. Here's a cheap speaker from an electronics kit. If you look carefully on the, white on the white legs, you can see the positive and the negative indicated just here. On the back of it, there is a magnet. North Pole's one end. North Pole, South Pole is on the inside. What's inside it? Let me just take it out carefully. This is obviously the diaphragm. On the inside there is our coil of wire. The coil of wire goes out through the diaphragm. 
there. So you can see the wire comes out through the diaphragm and connects to the leads where I snapped it off. But that moving coil interacts with the stationary magnetic field to generate an electric signal.